What's funny about having the NV Mog is that as soon as I told people that I had this bike, their immediate response was, well, dude, how does it compare to the Crux? And I was like, man, just give me a minute, okay? Give me a minute to just enjoy the Mog. And now I'm ready to talk about it. And let me tell you, these are two very different bikes. Just like the rest of my videos, this video isn't sponsored. I'm a pretty normal dude. I ride around 7,500 miles a year. I enter the occasional race and I don't get paid to ride a bike. High level, both of these builds are very similar. They are both built up with a 4835 double chain ring and a 1036 cassette. And I've been swapping wheel sets back and forth. So I started with the NV45 AR discs and now I'm running the reserve 4044s between the Crux and the Mog. The Crux is primarily built with SRAM Force components with the exception of the crank set, which is a SRAM Red. And the Mog is a full SRAM Red with the exception of the rear cassette, which is a Force 1036. In fact, if you remember my Melee build, these are all of the parts off of the Melee. When it comes to aesthetics, this is where I feel like the Mog really shines. And when I think about a modern gravel bike, the Mog is what I envision. It's super clean, there are no exposed cables, and it just looks really sharp and polished, as you'd expect from a high-end gravel bike. The integrated storage in the down tube is really, really slick, and I think the way that they did that right underneath of the bottle cage is really, really well thought out. Compared to the Mog, the Crux looks like it was built in another era. It has traditional round tubes, exposed cables, and it kind of has that classic clean look. It is simplicity at its finest, and it truly is bare bones. I mean, when you look at it, there are no additional mounts or protective measures. It almost looks like it's a very delicate bike. This is where we start to see a big difference between these two bikes. And one glance at a comparative geometry chart between the two can kind of give you an indication of just what these bikes are designed to do and how they're going to handle. The Mog is going to be your true all around gravel bike. It's built for adventure, it's built for long days in the saddle. It's built to go fast when you need it to, but it's also built to carry all of your gear and go on long bike packing adventures. The geometry is gonna put you in a more upright position and it's gonna be a little bit more relaxed, allowing you to tackle more aggressive and technical terrain. The Crux on the other hand is first and foremost, a bike built for cyclocross and like other cyclocross bikes out there, it blurs the lines between road and gravel. And as such, the Crux provides a very lively and energetic ride quality. And while it feels very snappy and quick and responsive, you may find that it is a little bit too snappy, quick and responsive if you're coming from a gravel bike. It's something that takes a little bit of time to get used to. If I could bring a car comparison into it, I'd say the Mog is like a modern Toyota Land Cruiser. It's the go anywhere, do anything type of vehicle. It's gonna inspire confidence and it's never going to let you down or leave you stranded. On the other hand, you have the Crux, and I'd say the Crux is more like a Porsche Cayenne. You can go just about anywhere, you can do just about anything, and you'll get there incredibly quickly, but it definitely has its limitations. When it comes to value, let's start with this number, $5,500. Let's just let that sink in for a second. See, with the Mog, you kinda get what you get. You've got the $5,500 frame or chassis combo. And that's it, there's no lower tier option. So if you're looking to just test the waters and see if you like gravel, the Mog may not be your first choice because by the time you build up a bike, very quickly you've got yourself a five figure bike. If value is your main driver in this decision making process, I'd strongly encourage you to consider the Crux Pro frame set. I think they call it the 10R Carbon. Yes, it's still $3,200, but it's $1,300 less than the S-Works frame set, and all you're doing is getting a frame that's just a little bit heavier. And I think you could take those savings and put them towards things that will actually make you faster. Call it wheels, call it tires, call it a trainer or a subscription to something like Trainer Road or Zwift. Those are things that are going to make you actually faster instead of just saving a couple hundred grams on your frame set. One of the things that's tough about some of these comparison videos is that it often feels like we wanna draw some conclusion where at the end we have a winner and we have a loser. And I think like most things, that isn't really the case. You have a bike like the Mog that is incredibly versatile and I would say on the gravel spectrum, it kind of sits right in the center. If you strip it down to just its core and you don't add anything to it, it's a very fast gravel bike and it performs as such. 
And then if you wanna go bike packing or you wanna go on like long all day adventures and you wanna mount bags and bottles and all that, you've also got the ability to do that. And I think it's hard to beat the MOG's versatility. And if we can imagine a spectrum where we now shift a little bit further towards road, well, that's where the crux comes in. And it's just as versatile, but in a different sense. See, the crux is still kind of that bike that blurs the lines between road and gravel, but it's going to encounter limitations on gravel, whereas the MOG is gonna keep going and going and going, and it's gonna inspire that confidence to get you through more technical and aggressive terrain. It's not to say that one is better than the other, they're just different bikes. And I'd argue that they're both exceptional bikes in their own respects. So I think it all depends on what you're after. If you're looking for a bike that's gonna allow you to race gravel and go on long bike packing adventures with your friends, the MOG is absolutely the ticket for you. And if you're looking for something that maybe feels a little bit more like a road bike that's gonna allow you to go on some light gravel and get off the roads, then the Crux is probably for you. Again, both bikes are fantastic and each has their place within the bike spectrum. You know, having just returned from Bentonville, Arkansas and having had a chance to ride the Allied Echo, I think if you're looking at the Crux and the MOG, you also might want to take a peek at the Echo. I was really blown away by that bike. I thought it was really, really impressive. And in kind of the do it all bike space, I think this should be a strong consideration. Anyways, we'll talk about that more in the coming weeks and until next time.